On October 31st, Martin Luther in 1517 wrote out 95 theses to expose the, the faults of the Roman Catholic Church. His intention was not to start a revolution against the Roman Catholic Church, but to reform the Roman Catholic Church. Unfortunately, a lot of Roman Catholics look at Protestants as revolutionaries. When Martin Luther himself was not a revolutionary, he was a reformer. He genuinely felt with the conviction from God to reform the church in his generation. But unfortunately, when he went with scripture to show them the error of the church, rather than them repenting or being convinced by scripture that he was right, they wanted to hold on to their old heresy truths because his, their old her heresy truths like indulgences and penance were building that their infrastructure, were, were supporting financially their endeavors and they didn't want to hear truth at that day. All they wanted to do was establish buildings and advance their, their religious agenda. But Martin Luther was under conviction that the scripture is how the church should be established. And so he, with a conviction, held the church accountable in his generation to scripture. And friends, he did it with a sincere heart. And unfortunately, they persecuted him. They persecuted those that would uphold scripture more than the teachings of the Pope or the church of his day. And friends, we need a reformation in the generation that we are living in. We are in desperate need of a reformation, not a re revolution, but a reformation. Because we're living in a generation too where the church has just become a building, where, where church has just become a time to sing songs and listen to a message. Instead of it being a place of conviction for obedience to the Great Commission and evangelizing souls that souls would be saved, we've become consumers and we're just going to get our uh, senses uh, touched, we're getting our intellect scratched, but we're not being called to obedience. And right now there are thousands and millions of people that have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the reformation that's needed today is a reformation of, of evangelism evangelism coming back to the church of Jesus Christ making us realize why we are here Martin Luther did it in his generation and we need to do it in our generation you no know, many Christians are celebrating Halloween this Sunday on October 31st not realizing that it is not the celebration that God had intended it to be you know the Roman Catholic Church turned October 31st into the day of remembrance of the dead and and the demonic influence because they saw Martin Luther as a demonic threat to their church. They saw Martin Luther as a demonic threat to their programs, to their business. He was not good for their business. And so they made October 31st a memory of the devil and demons. When really, friends, as the Church of Jesus Christ, October 31st should be the day we celebrate with everything we've got that a man was willing to stand against tyranny, stand against heresy, stand against foolishness and wickedness and say that his conscience would not be deterred from scripture. His conscience was captive to scripture. And my friends, this is a generation where young men and young women must rise up with a conscience that is captive only to scripture, not to our seminaries, not to our denominations, not to our churches, not to our teachers, our pastors, or our preachers. We must be held captive to scripture and scripture alone because it is scripture and scripture alone that is the answer to the problems of our generation, not our politics, not our wisdom, not our ingenuity, not our strength, but the truth of scripture being preached in an unadulterated way. It will drive out devils and demons. And so October 31st, friends, let's have a prayer meeting. Let's pray against darkness. Let's pray against wickedness. Let's pray against the demonic strongholds all across our nation in the name of Jesus Christ. And let's remember on that day, the 95 Thesis that was hammered to a church in Germany and remember the bloodshed of the reformers that got us the liberties and the civil liberties that we've got today. We wouldn't have the freedom to preach like we've got today if it were not for the Anabaptists, if it were not for the reformers, 
If it were not for the Puritans, we wouldn't even have the society of freedom that we have in our generation. We must not forget where we came from as Protestant believers in Jesus Christ. We must not forget where we came from and we must not forget that doctrine is essential for salvation. It doesn't matter how many chill bumps a Mormon gets without salvation through faith in Christ, they are going to go to hell. The Jehovah Witnesses are going to go to hell if they don't repent. You can't revise the Bible hundreds of times to make it fit your doctrine and think you're going to heaven. And friends, this may be challenging to those that are listening on in America, but the Roman Catholic doctrine cannot save the soul of a Roman Catholic. And let me tell you something, friends. Jesus never called one of his apostles priests. He never called one of his disciples priests. No, not even one of the Aaronic priesthood was called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus was doing away with the priesthood. And when he died upon the cross, the veil that separated mankind from the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom to show all of the human race. There is no longer a human mediator between us and God, but Christ is the mediator. Christ is the priest and we can go to God through Jesus. That's why the veil was rent from top to bottom, because there is no longer a priest between man and God, but Jesus Christ. And we believe as Protestant believers that in the priesthood of all believers, any man that puts faith in Jesus Christ has access to the Father like the high priest had access to the Father in the Old Testament. And we can know God, not just know about him or know him from somebody else, but we can know him for ourselves. That's what Christ accomplished when he shed his blood at the cross. And I plead with you today, friends, let's rise up with conviction and evangelize the Roman Catholics. Let's evangelize the Mormons. Let's evangelize the Jehovah Witnesses. For if they do not repent and they stand before God based on the doctrine that they believe in, they will not have assurance of eternal life. This is why we preach with passion. This is why we take our words so serious, friends. What's more serious? adding years to a physical life here on this planet or offering eternal life that saves the soul forever. Friends, we must sober up as preachers and teachers and believers in Christ. Sober up the message we've got doesn't just add years to someone's life like a surgeon's does or like a doctor's does. Our message is far more serious than what a surgeon does, far more serious than what a doctor does because our message holds in the balance eternal life and eternal darkness. And friends, it's only in the place of prayer that God can break our hearts for souls and put a seriousness in us for the hour that we are living in as the church of Jesus Christ. It is too late for us to try to experience heaven on earth. I'm not here to experience heaven on earth. I'm not selling out my soul like Judas did for a few pieces of silver so he could have a nice life. Look how he ended making silver God of his life. Look at how he ended making gold God of his life. There is no end to the materialism uh, gods of this generation other than death and suicide. Friends, today it is time to abandon ourselves to the glory of Jesus Christ and preach his gospel until tears pour down our face for sinners that we are preaching to. This hour is now, this reformation is now, and you can be a part of that reformation. We are not revolutionaries, we are not rebels. There is nothing in us that wants to tear the church down. We love the church more than anything else, but we love the church enough to tell the church the truth. And friends, those that tell us the truth are the ones that truly love us. Flattery is not love. I don't care how much flattery you get. Remember this, friends. Flattery is not love. Real love tells you the truth, but flattery is not love. Telling people what they want to hear is not love, but telling people what they need to hear is the greatest love we can ever show somebody. Telling people what they need to hear is the greatest love we can express. Don't use flattery in your evangelism. Don't tell people what they want to hear. Friends, with conviction from scripture, tell people what they need to hear and love them all the way into the arms of God in the name of Jesus. God bless you, everybody.